Hey YouTube, welcome back to our channel. My name is Elena. And I'm Bjorn. And we are Viking Age Reenactors and Living Historians here to talk with you about your favorite Viking shows. So we are coming back from our two week break and we are jumping straight into Vinland Saga and we are doing so on Twitch. And that's why you're seeing this new background behind us. Uh, we are going to be streaming live uh, every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time US. And if you want to join us and watch our reactions live and discussions live, you are free to do so. You can even pipe in and ask us questions and have us discuss anything Viking specific or non-Viking specific. Yeah, or just about <laughs> anime or anything else, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> but we will be here. Um, and with that, let's jump into the show. Just to summarize, we're introduced to... Um, the character in the family of Thorfinn and Leif Erikson is kind of giving his own summary of his trip to Vinland and yeah. how he got like he's the boasting. Feather. Yeah, he's boasting how he got like the feather headdress and the pipe from them, and um, how like the feather headdress uh, was only worn by warriors, which is a Native American um, part of the culture. Yep, and then like saying that like Leif and the kid's father are like good great warriors and all kind of stuff and yeah. and learns we kind of got a, just an idea of of like the characters makeup and like their mentality and and motivations and stuff mm -hmm. so like obviously we have thorfinn as like the child who is you know brought up to be very brave and noble and how dare you say we ran away we don't run kind of thing like <laughs> whatever and then his father of like being beyond generous and noble and virtuous and stuff like willing to like sacrifice so much for his morality which is totally legitimate mm -hmm. price of a slave varies depending on the slave one that was near death would not be worth eat young ewes uh that is a worth one yeah exactly <laughs> that is a hefty price i've heard i've heard i've read that like slaves could be worth a fair amount mm -hmm. um you know if they were like prized and and like good at, at working and doing stuff and like had many skills and talents and things um but yeah, for comparison, like, I mean, even just the comparison there it was four times the initial worth of the dude and he was on his deathbed and all kind of stuff. But it gives you an idea of like who Thor's is as a yeah. person, which is more about what it, the whole whole idea of the of that interaction was. And also Huffman being literally just an Asian Vlad the Impaler. <laughs> Basically, you got to have that like black haired evil half done dude yeah with in like every single show with like a <laughs> chain made out of razor blades <laughs> like yeah. holy shit that said like the the i i do kind of like the art style it's it's different from other animes but i can i mean there's it's obviously an anime yeah. you know it shares a lot of the similarities which i'm not a huge fan of in general but it it is enjoyable um at the I very did. least thank you pablo it's so interesting how even in, like, a drawn cartoon, essentially, like, even in an anime, the main characters are the ones that look silly and, and frilly, and yet the background characters are the ones that still <laughs> are dressed more historically <laughs> than anyone else. Like, you can literally put them in any costume you want. Why, why don't you just make it look like a historically accurate costume man you don't have to pay for anything extra even to yeah. like oh it's frustrating yeah it's kind of a mixed bag the fact that um for the most part they're not using you know full like fur linings uh, and everything is a good sign and they're mm -hmm. using fur trims on clothing i saw leif had um that square neck tunic um mm -hmm. which we're pretty sure existed. Some, something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. It was it was reminiscent of a later age style that existed, um, and I did see some of those, uh, you know, keyhole necklines and um, pieces of wear that were very historically accurate. Mm -hmm. um, helmets looked good. When Halfdan came over with his little war band, uh, most of them actually had spears, which I found really interesting. Yeah. Um, the shields looked great, even down to the patterning on them. Yep. Yeah, the ships were lovely, minus like the um, 
the dragon or ram's heads. Like again, it's it's, it's a drawn style. It's yeah. fine. You know, it's 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 going to be simplified. Exactly. Yeah. Or or like exaggerated in mm-hmm. like the wrong way, I guess, but even still it's like it's not even an, an issue for me. Um and like the house design was lovely too. Mm-hmm. It was gorgeous the interior cuz it was super simple. And, like, everything was kind of, like, there. And, like, you could see in the back, like, stockfish being hung up to... The, for Either they were being dried or were already dried. And had, like, a little side storeroom. And, like, even, like, the sheep were inside mm-hmm. at a point. And it's like, which, yes. Which they did. Which is exactly true. Because Greenland was horribly cold. And, like, part of, part of the Greenlandic way to keep warm in, like, the horrible freezing winter, which was, like, negative 40 at times was to literally just bring the animals inside and have their body temp like their body heat warm the house along with yours and have the fire going and everything granted we're in iceland but still they probably did the same thing but yeah so a couple of things of note so our main character uh thorfinn carl stephanie he is actually written about in two sagas um that are known as the vinland sagas basically Mm mm-hmm hence the name, roll credits. Um, he shows up in both uh, Eric's saga, Eric the Red, and uh, the Greenlander saga. Uh, the two sagas are basically the same story. They're just told by different authors. And they're, One's more detailed. One is more detailed. The other one, um, it definitely doesn't take as long to read, but there are differences in the sagas. And mm-hmm. that's one of the things that I'm already starting to look into here is which of the sagas are they going to be going toward a little bit because Vinland is credited to Leif Erikson but there are a few other places in America um in one of the sagas uh I believe Leif is still credited with naming them in the other saga it's actually Thorfinn that goes there and then he names those places right Markland being one of them that sounds right yeah so here because they already have the name Markland um they're not giving Thorfinn that credit yeah. Right off the bat, that's yeah. Leif's. Uh, the other thing is, uh, I didn't catch the mother's name, but the father's name, uh, Thor's, that is actually his father's name. Um, the mother's name, I believe it should be like Thorin. A Thor dedicated family. Yeah, Thorfinn, Thor's, Thorun. Thor, yeah. I, exactly. I, I think it's Thorin. But the other cool thing about uh, Thorfinn is he is actually supposed to come from the lineage of Ragnar Lothbrok. Um, he is like a great, great, great grandson of Bjorn Ironside. But yeah, so uh, he is credited again with uh, going to Vinland. Um, I, I believe it was around like 10, uh, 1010, year 1010. So we're in 1002, I think um, yep. they showed in Iceland currently, uh, which makes sense because he's Icelandic. I believe from what I've read, he actually grew up in Western Iceland. Um, again, not sure exactly where the show is setting their family farm in. They just said other side Iceland. of the mountains. Yeah, that's but true. But like where exactly in Iceland? I don't know how detailed they're getting in that. Yeah, that's true. I don't, I'm trying to think. I want to say that they said that they were West, but I might just be reflecting that now um but I, i'm pretty sure they just said on the other side of the mountains mm-hmm. which <laughs> it's iceland there's a, there's a, fair <laughs> there's a lot of mountains, of mountains. <laughs> one other talking point um that i kind of wanted to touch on and i think you can speak to it a little bit better than i can is um the story about harold Fairhair and ah. how he caused the mass migration out of norway yeah and into iceland yeah so so harold harold Fairhair. um amazingly lived into his 80s or 90s or something, which is just, it's not unheard of, but it's still just impressive for the time. But he was a very young minor king, and Harold wanted to get a wife, and she basically told him, no, (laughs) (laughs) no, (laughs) Um, you're basically, like, why would I marry you, go out and get some reputation and then come back she said you basic you basic (laughs) (laughs) yep so he got told he was basic he's a simp um and so he said no i don't like that you know like he he was a little bit he was a kid Mm -hmm. when he like inherited his little petty throne he he was essentially a petty jarl among many other petty jarls um but what he did was he went out and conquered 
all of what is modern day Norway under his one kingship. And he established the monarchy in Norway that rules to this present day, which is really intense. But um, a lot of people saw this like consolidation of power and establishing of a monarchy as very reminiscent of the powers in mainland Europe, which were highly Christianized. So there's this concept, I mean, we don't really know for sure exactly because there's so many conflicting historical documentation and historical stories and stuff. Um, but the idea idea that's generally accepted as far as I know it might have changed since then but um is basically that a lot of the common folk or, or just a lot of the population in Norway kind of saw this consolidation of powers and establishing of a, of a kingship as very similar to the rules in mainland Europe and they kind of compared that to their the Christianity kind of having a main focus point as well and so a lot of people decided to flee Nor Norway and just pick up the shop and, and head out because they had, you know, their their chieftains had sworn oaths or been defeated and they were all under the under the rulership of, of Harold and so they either wanted to get out because they thought him oppressive and like a tyrannical ruler or they feared that he might draw them away from their more traditional um, like religion essentially, like the the beliefs of their forefathers, so they left, and they kind of went all over the place. Um, a lot of them were known to kind of settle themselves in northern British Isles, like along um, the Hebrides and, and Scotland and Northumbria. Um, a lot of them also went to Iceland, and um, I, f I think that's why a lot of people will kind of compare traditional Viking beliefs to what we know about in Iceland, because if it was a settlement that literally was created kind of in a similar way to America, where they didn't want their, you know, they didn't want to be persecuted for their beliefs, it kind of reasonably can be assumed that those beliefs that they would have lived by in Iceland would be similar to the older beliefs in Norway. Mm -hmm. You know, like that kind of similarity. I hope that makes sense. Um, but yeah, and so we got a little bit of that history in, in the show as well. Eventually he didn't marry, and supposedly he had many mistresses along the way to being a king but yeah for sure um, i digress but yeah so that's that's like one of the reasons why it's said that people left uh norway the other reasons being that um land in norway was fairly settled mm -hmm. and people were just looking at, you know for new farmland they were looking for new opportunities um, yeah, and that's a very non-political like, motivation, which yeah, absolutely just to, like, also spread out a makes little sense. Bit. That contributed to the push to Iceland. That also contributed to the push to Greenland because Iceland got settled fairly, you know, decently. Obviously, not as densely as uh, some other populations, yeah. but still, you know, farms kind of grew and compacted together, and then people moved to Greenland, and that was also a contributing factor to the push to Vinland itself, mm -hmm. um, because, you know, discovering new lands and pushing toward them and settling them has just always been the way of the Norsemen, apparently. Yeah. And actually, so. really quick, now that you say that, we also got a little bit of a hint of, um, of this in the show, which is, now that I'm thinking about it, it's kind of interesting, but I remember hearing... Um, uh, I mean, just reading about it in general, but also hearing about it from um, Dr. Jackson Crawford, mm -hmm. where he was kind of comparing Iceland at the time to almost like a Wild West of the Viking Age. <laughs> um, and while that's really silly to think about, it's also very accurate. I don't think I've ever heard this. <laughs> no? <laughs> no? Oh, yeah. He kind of, he kind of compared, compared like living in Iceland at the time to kind of being like a Wild West scenario where like, yeah, there were laws and, and there were things that you had to abide by, but also like you had to be able to stand up for yourself and like fend off people until you could get the law involved. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So like... And we saw that a little bit at the at the harbor with the one dude who was like, "Damn the law! I'm gonna kill this dude and cut off his leg because he offended my pig or something. Who knows? I can't remember." Um, and like the guy stopped him with the with the chains, was like, "Nobody disobeys the law here." And like that was exactly kind of the thing in Iceland too. You know, the risk of living there at the time is like, yeah, they had laws and they had you know certain things to go by, but also if you read the Icelandic sagas so much of the time that just like breaks down and dissolves into fighting and feuds and all kind of shit that eventually gets settled in court. Mm -hmm. But 
in the time being, in any other time where the court isn't gathered, like at the at the thing, um, and it's literally called the thing. I'm not just forgetting the word. No, it it is the, called the it's all thing. The thing. Um, yeah, the all thing. Yeah, it, I mean, when you weren't at the all thing, and you couldn't like spill blood or do harmful things, like you were literally had to fend for yourself and like commit murders or or whatever else until the next all thing where you could try to get it settled and squared away. But so much of the time, it was it was just kind of like living adjacent to the law. Let's let's hop into episode two. We're almost wow, we're almost we're almost a twelfth of the way done with this show already. I I was preemptively getting my words ready and then and they then spilled almost. out of my face hole. And then almost happened. I almost got them out of my mouth. Thank you guys so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did hit the like button, if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you can be notified of our future videos, and we'll see you in the next one.